Hi, I'm Yasmin Binti Razak from Media Post Production School of Film and Media Studies at Ngeon Polytechnic. Family violence is something that happens behind closed doors and many have been shy to talk about it in the open. Over the years, different agencies have brought the issue up to the public to encourage people to come forward. We have Ms. Sandra Olia, a former housewife who experienced domestic violence for nine years. Ms. Sandra, how are you doing so far? I'm doing good, yes. I'm very happy to be here. Could you share with us about the backstory of the marriage? I came to Singapore around 1996 or 1997. I uh, had no other intention to stay long, but finally I got involved with the community and I met my ex not long after uh, he proposed and we got married. What made you stay with your husband? So it was the first two weeks after the wedding that um, the first incident took place. It was kind of hard to accept that, but I had a very, very strong hope with my background. I grew up in a family that believe uh, we stay together till death do us apart. I believe that we can work things out. I have hopes that, you know, this is just only one time incident. That's why I stay. Were there any signs that he had violent tendencies before the abuse started? Uh, no, I could never see any sign of violence at all, knowing him, and even at the first time. That's why it took me by surprise. What I felt at the time, it was uh, not under physical pain, but it is more of a shocking state of mind to see like what I see in the movie is really happening in my life. Like, you know, like it was so unexpected. We have Dr. Sean E in the studio. Dr. Sean is a clinical psychologist and psychoanalytic psychotherapist. Dr. Sean, what defines domestic violence? So yes, the domestic violence to me, which uh, as the name suggests, would be um, you know the display of violent or aggressive uh, behavior tendencies within the home context. And uh, usually, we talk about this, and people associate it closely with um, you know typically involving the violent abuse of a spouse or partner. Right? But just as just as easily, you know, you might hear reports of these in the news about uh, helpers or maids and anyone that resides at home. How does domestic violence affect victims psychologically? So say, for example, some person assuming that they don't have a history of having quite negative experiences with people, maybe bullying and all that, you would all feel the same thing. For example, a lack of sense of security, fear and anxiety quite a lot. Sometimes depression also, a sense of depression because uh, like, there's no hope. I can't see myself get out of this. Uh, which also brings up the anxiety too. So a sense of threat always causes people to go into the realm of a bit of trauma as well. So emotional trauma, physical trauma, you know, tends to linger with us and it's hard to shake because if you feel like you're on the edge all the time, even with family members, it can often go overlooked. Why do victims sometimes return to or stay with abusers? Uh, a constant threat to not just yourself, but maybe uh, people close by to you. They say if you report, I know you're not scared of me, but you might be scared if I hurt your son or daughter or things like that. So it can perpetuate itself quite a bit. Also, I mean, you, you can imagine tendencies, for example, violent men like husbands to actually hit their wives. And these men might be actually uh, sole breadwinners of the family, you know, and uh, they might threaten them. So you're going to throw you on the streets, so you can move out of the house, you know, you take the children. So the fear can be that without uh, my husband, who has always been providing for us, we cannot survive. So uh, power is maintained in a particular way and exercised also in this victim-abuser dynamic. Back to Miss Sandra, what was the key moment that made you decide that enough is enough? And how did you seek help and protection? Abuse is like a habit, uh, like addiction. You know, it's, it's something considered as a situation, as a condition. I didn't realize the fact that I'm facing a condition until the incident in January 2011. The police officer that I called actually referred me to PAVE. And there I learned about this pattern of violence. It's the honeymoon stage and then there will always be a tension building. And either you go to the explosion, which is the violence, or you bypass that and go into the honeymoon. So that same pattern is the same pattern I've been living with for nine years. Then when I look at that, I understood that I am facing a situation. And of course, apart from that, in faith, I also learned about power and control, which actually uh, violence used threat and coercion, 
intimidation, emotional abuse, or using money like economic uh, isolations, or uh, using children, or to worse situation using vulgarity. I I experienced almost ninety percent out of this. The last straw was in September 2011. The trigger was when he used my daughter as a collateral damage, but he couldn't get to me. He always got to my daughter. I knew that at a point of time, I could not save my daughter. So that was the trigger for me to leave him because I couldn't protect my daughter. Did you find having an open conversation with your husband beneficial? And other times where you think he could change? It was not a very easy thing for me to communicate with him about this issue. My ex-husband is alcoholic. So uh, usually the uh, violence took place after he drinks. So in daytime, he's pretty okay. I can talk to him about everything. But unfortunately, he pent up his emotion. And he will use back all the information when he's at rage. And it really makes it difficult to open up to him to discuss about the repercussion because he will use it against me. I saw a drastic change in how he handled conflict and uh, his whole attitude, like wanting to reconcile. So we were able to start opening up and talk about this very sensitive issue at the surface level. Then the next outburst came. Dr. Sean, is it possible for abusers to change? Without a doubt, there will be treatments, right, that actually focus on reducing those behaviours. Those actually may be more middle-term kind of therapy, maybe half a year or less. But for true internal change and healing, right, uh, it might require a lot longer. Another important factor that may limit the successful treatment is that some of these individuals don't want to seek therapy or they don't want help. They think that they have no problems. So these will be a subset that are particularly resistant to any kind of like being pointed out that they are wrong. What resources do government, police and society provide to support and protect victims? Uh, you know, what I would recommend to individuals that are going through abuse or you know, some violence at home, they don't know where to go. They may start to, uh, you know, the phone call once. So you might have SOS, Ministry of Social and Family Development, very good place to start with as well. Family service centers, but I would say, right, the ones that you may not realize are the family GPs. They are medical doctors, they have a duty of care. So if you say something in, in confidence, right, then you know, you say, I don't want to do, can you help me? Then maybe they can refer you to uh, someone that is trusted. Before we close our discussion, Ms. Sandra and Dr. Sean, what advice do you have for women who have found themselves in the hands of abusers? I always think that every woman who suffer domestic violence are very strong. I want to uh, say that they are extraordinary. Also, for those who listen to this message, uh, I want to empower the public because really uh, for domestic uh, violence survivors, we are covered with shame. And uh, even for me personally, to come out of it, it was very difficult. So we really need the public to step up and help us. Our public silence is a silent approval to tolerate the abuser uh, to continue with this abusive act. So we need to empower and and, and change uh, the mindset that it is not we kiasu, we want to, <laughs> to stop other people or want to get to know their problem, it's not. But it is just really to make sure that they are okay. Uh, I would say if there is imminent danger, uh, to try to remove themselves as well as their loved ones out of the home immediately where possible. They go to a family friend, go to someone that's trusted so that they can maintain some degree of uh, a felt feeling of security. Right? Um, take the things that you feel that are important for your daily livelihood. Make sure you bring your mobile phone, your wallet and these things. Assuming that these, these women have things to uh, important things to, pro- uh, to protect, uh, family members to protect their home as well, as well as themselves. Thank you, Ms. Sandra and Dr. Sean, for the discussion. In conclusion, the community plays an important role in deterring domestic violence. We should look out for signs of family violence so that victims can get help as soon as possible.